Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing off my Raspberry Pi setup. This is the version B+, and according to the website, raspberrypi.org, uh, compared to the Model B, this one has more GPIO headers, which are the output or input things that you can do projects with. Um, it has more USB ports and you can see it has four USB ports on this side it has a lower power consumption better audio and a neater form factor so I have mine set up inside of a project box that I built and I've also attached a reset button reset slash start button onto the board which is this. So if you don't know what the Raspberry Pi is, it's basically a mini computer that you can do um, various projects with. And the Raspberry Pi, it doesn't have the most memory or the best processor, but it's good for like small projects and things like that. So I'm going to just show you all the ports real quick. So you've got the four USB ports on this side, and I've got a wireless USB stick attached. And then you've got an Ethernet input. On the side, you've got an audio out for headphone jacks. And you've got an HDMI. You've got power right here, which um, connects to a micro USB cord. And then on the other side, it has a micro USB input and then of course there's the GPIO pins and then right here it has a place for a camera um, you can get a camera attachment and right here it has an attachment for a display an external display so then you could attach a screen to this make some sort of project out of that. So the things that I've been using for uh, this device, I have a mini USB keyboard, I've got an uh, Xbox controller, and a USB Nintendo Super NES controller. So I've got set up the, it's called RetroPie. That's the operating system that I have on, installed on here. And it's a modified version of the original Raspbian Pi operating system. Raspbian OS. And this one, uh, this operating system comes with Emulation Station, which is a, a GUI front end to play emulated games. So it's basically the menu. Um... So yeah, enough talking, why don't I just show you this. Okay, so I've got my TV here, I've got the box, and I'm going to begin plugging in the HDMI cable, and then the power cable, which is the micro USB. As soon as I plug that in, it starts up. The Raspberry Pi is starting up. And I'm also going to plug in the Xbox controller, just so you can see how it works on here. And here's the RetroPie um, boot up image. And then it goes back to this screen to finish up booting. And here's Emulation Station. This is the GUI front end I was talking about. So this GUI doesn't actually do the emulation. It runs all the emulation software. So here we have the Emulation Station up and running. And I have the Xbox controller connected. So, as you can see, I can control left and right. So, we've got the Macintosh 
um, emulation, which I currently do not have set up. We've got the Apple II console, so that just opens into like a command prompt. We've got some Super Nintendo games, uh, PlayStation and ports, these are PC ports, and then a few Nintendo 64 games. Uh, the Nintendo 64 games don't work exactly how they're supposed to. Um, partially because the processing isn't fast enough, and another is something wrong with the software, um, which I'll talk about later. So, let's just look at a port real quick. So, there's all these, and Doom... Duke Nukem, Minecraft, but it's just not full screen, it's like a little window. All the other games work perfectly, so I guess I'll just show you uh, Quake 3 Arena once I plug in the keyboard because the Xbox controller does not work with it. You can see it wants a CD key and I can just enter anything and single player. Just going to show you real quick just so you can see that it can actually process this pretty well. Which I was sort of surprised. Okay, so here's the game. It's not it's not bad. Not bad graphics for the Raspberry Pi. Um one thing to keep in mind is that this is actually this device is actually overclocked and I can show you how that is done later but let's get out of this game so I can show you some more things okay so now that I've shown you that let's do some some of the Super Nintendo I'm gonna show you this real quick Let's do Donkey Kong Country, and these are ones that you have to download, or uh, because they don't come with Emulation Station. And the PC ones uh, basically came with Emulation Station once you do an update. So here I'm going to try out Donkey Kong, and I can either use this controller or the Xbox controller. I'm going to use the Xbox controller for this. The Xbox controller uh, by default um, worked on all of these games. I actually clicked escape. Um, yeah, by default the Xbox controller worked, but with the USB Super NES controller it had to be custom configured for that controller. I had to get all the key codes and everything set up. So yeah, here's uh, Donkey Kong Country running just fine on here. It's not really any lag or anything. So yeah, that's that. So I'm going to escape from Donkey Kong Country. And finally, I'm going to show you what I mean when I was talking about the Nintendo 64 game. So first of all, there's all these different games. Banjo-Kazooie works just fine. Uh, the menu, for some reason the start menu doesn't show, so it's just like a transparent start, start menu with no menu items. Uh, Mario Kart 64 works. It's a little bit laggy. Super Mario 64 runs pretty well um, and Super Smash Brothers is unusable um, way too laggy it doesn't get past screens and things like that so I'm just gonna show you Super Mario 64 that's one of my favorite games I also have for the Nintendo 64 because I still do have a Nintendo 64 and Super Nintendo alright so this is the only screen that's a little laggy. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a tiny bit laggy. So I just click the start button. Um, I can use the Xbox controller to move around. 
and everything. So here you can see it's running just fine. The only thing is when you go to escape the game or exit out of the game, you can't. Uh, the, that's something wrong uh, running this through emulation station. And this is called MuPin64 Plus. That's the emulator that runs Super Nintendo games. I mean, Nintendo 64 games. So anyways, there's something wrong with escaping out of the game. And that's one of the main reasons I added the reset button. So as soon as I press the reset button, it turns off and restarts. Okay, so emulation station is back up. And now that I've shown you all these um, games and things like that, I want to show you some of the extra stuff that's included. So if you click the F4 key on your keyboard or you can click start and go to quit I'm going to click F4 it gets you out and brings you into the Linux console and uh, that's the bash RC um, little um, image uh, script with all the specs and then uh, You've got all the standard things that comes with um, Raspbian OS and a few extra. So first of all, I want to show you that there is a RetroPie setup directory. So if I go into, if I cd change directory into RetroPie-setup, There is a RetroPie setup.sh. So if I do sudo, just to run as root, dot slash RetroPie setup.sh, it opens this menu and there's all these different things that you can do with the RetroPie operating system. Binary base installation, source base installation, setup, experimental packages, updates, and all that. So I'm going to click cancel. There's sudo rpi update, which updates the Raspberry Pi. And then there's also the standard Debian based apt, sudo apt, and you can use that to apt get. There's update and upgrade, so you can use that command as well, since this is the standard Debian package manager. And then another thing I wanted to show you was sudo raspi-config. This comes with Raspbian OS, which also comes with RetroPy. So if you um, start it, you can see there's a bunch of different commands. Expand file system, change user password, enable boot, uh, slash de boot to desktop, um, camera, overclock. So this is what I was talking about with the overclock. This is how you can overclock it. I currently have it on, I had it on turbo. And without Turbo, it would not be able to run the Super Mario 64 game very well. There's also the standard desktop, the LXDE desktop. If you type in start X, that starts up the desktop. And you can see that there's all these apps and things like that. So if I do ls retropie slash roms, which is the directory where you store all the roms, you can see that there's all these different folders. Amiga, Apple II, Atari, um, C64, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Macintosh, Mega Drive, Nintendo 64, PC, NES, Sega, 
PlayStation, Super NES, and all these different things are uh, emulations that can be run through Emulation Station. And the last thing I want to show you, you can either type in Emulation Station to get back into Emulation Station, or you can type in Exit, which can be a little easier. Um, and then it starts up Emulation Station. So yeah, that's my um, setup. I don't, I can't really think of anything else to show you. So I thank you all for watching, and please subscribe.